Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, about a week ago now, when we were neck deep in Radeon Refresh and FSR 2.0 testing, everyone's attention quickly shifted towards AMD drivers, and not for the reasons that you might be thinking. The claims from various sources popped up stating that the new Radeon driver, or this new preview driver, was boosting performance anywhere from 5 to 15%, and this caused many of you to bombard me with requests to check it out. So, of course I have. But before we get into it, a quick backstory. On the 10th of May, so last week, AMD released the new Adrenaline Edition 22.5.1 driver, which we used for all of our updated GPU testing around the 6650XT, 6750XT, and 6950XT. The highlights of that release being it supports the new refresh models, and that was really it. But on the same day, so the 10th of May, AMD also released a second driver called AMD Software Preview Driver, May 2022. And the release notes for that driver were pretty interesting. Firstly, it claimed DirectX 11 optimization for Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs, with an up to 8% performance improvement for the Radeon RX 6950 XT, versus the previous software version being 22.5.1. So while they used the 6950XT as the example, the claim is that all RX 6000 GPUs should see improved DX11 performance. The notes also claim optimizations for smart access memory, so SAM, in Death Stranding and Watch Dogs Legion, with gains as high as 24%. So those are some rather substantial claims which could really help improve Radeon RX 6000 series performance and help them stack up better against the GeForce competition. So to find out just how much of a difference this new driver makes, I'm taking our 50 game lineup and testing it using driver version 22.5.1 and then comparing that data with the new preview driver using the Radeon RX 6700 XT. Now, ideally, I would love to test more Radeon GPUs, but for a 50 game sample, I think you'll understand why I limited the testing to a single graphics card. For all testing, resize will bar was enabled, so SAM for the Radeon GPUs, and I'm using the Ryzen 9 5950X with 32GB of dual rank dual channel memory. Finally, I've tested 50 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and we'll look at the performance across all 50 games, but before that, I'll go over the data for a few of the games individually. So, Let's get into it. Starting with Watch Dogs Legion, where AMD claimed anywhere from a 6 to 24% performance improvement with SAM enabled, depending on the GPU used. Here we have the 6700 XT, which was up to 17% faster using the preview driver, seen at 1440p, where frame rates were increased from 82 FPS to 96 FPS. So a substantial increase there, and that saw the 6700 XT lead the RTX 3070 by a 9% margin whereas previously it was 7% slower. Now, the only other game to receive a claimed performance boost using SAM was Death Stranding, and this is another title that we were already testing. AMD claimed up to a 12% boost here with the 6750 XT, and that's right in line with our own findings with the 6700 XT of 11% at 1080p, 14% at 1440p, and then a 5% boost at 4K. But this really is a big deal for the 6700 XT and its fight with the RTX 3070 because previously at 1440p the Radeon GPU was 4% slower, whereas now with the preview driver it's 9% faster, so that is a significant change. Now let's move on to check out one of the more impressive gains we saw with the preview driver in titles that weren't specifically mentioned in the release notes. Here we have The Witcher 3, where the preview driver boosted performance by up to 10% seen at 1440p. That's a really nice gain that again helped the 6700 XT compete with the more expensive RTX 3070. Previously, it was 12% slower than the GeForce GPU, but now with the preview driver, it's just 3% slower. Moving on to Apex Legends, here we find a 9% boost at 1080p, 8% at 1440p, and then 6% at 4K. So again, Whereas the Radeon GPU was slower than the RTX 3070 at 1080p and 1440p, it's now able to match it and even nudge your head by a few frames. Interestingly, Call of Duty Vanguard, which by default uses DirectX 12, still saw a performance improvement with the preview driver. At 1080p, frame rates were improved by 9%, then a more mild 5% was seen at 1440p, and then 7% at 4K. This was enough to give the 6700 XT a performance advantage at 1080p and 1440p, while it caught the RTX 3070 at 4K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another game we test using DirectX 12, 
but even here the preview driver did offer some improvement. At 1080p, performance was boosted by 7% and then just 4% at 1440p and 4K. The gains were consistent across our testing and while certainly not huge, it does help the 6700 XT close in on the RTX 3070, making it just 6% slower at 1440p opposed to 10% slower. Now, Battlefield 5 does run best using the DirectX 11 API, and therefore this is typically how we test the game. Now, the new preview driver did improve performance here, and while the gains were consistently produced, they're also rather small. We're looking at just 4% at 1080p, 3% at 1440p, and 4K. Not exactly game-changing results, I'll admit, but it is free performance, and it does strengthen the Radeon GPU's position. We also test PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, otherwise known as PUBG, using DirectX 11, and here the Radeon GPUs generally get crushed by the GeForce competition, and unfortunately the preview driver didn't help much here. We're looking at a 3-4% performance boost, which is basically nothing when you consider the fact that the RTX 3070 is still 30% faster at 1080p. Microsoft Flight Simulator has also been tested using DirectX 11, and like a lot of the games that we've tested, there's no performance gains here with the new preview driver, so still a big performance advantage as seen here for NVIDIA. The last game I'm going to look at is War Thunder, and this is another DX11 title, and again, no performance improvement with the new preview driver. And again, this is another title where NVIDIA does have quite a substantial performance advantage, so it is disappointing that AMD wasn't able to close the gap. So, some truly impressive performance gains there, particularly just from a driver, though there were also some rather minuscule gains and then nothing at all. Therefore, the big question is, just how much does this new driver help across a wide range of games? And of course, to answer that, we'll move on to the 50 game comparison, and we'll be looking at the 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions. Starting at 1080p, we see that as impressive as some of the gains are, the overall picture hasn't really changed that much with just a 3% performance boost on average. The good news though being that the only game where performance really went backwards was Godfall, and that could just be a bug. But even so, if we were to remove that result, the margin remains at 3%. Now, although the SAM-related performance gains in Watch Dogs Legion and Death Stranding were mighty impressive, and the uplift for games such as Apex Legends and Vanguard were also excellent, for the most part we're looking at gains of 4% or less. In fact, 36 of the 50 games tested saw a performance advantage of 4% or less, so that means a negligible performance difference for over 70% of the games tested. Now moving to 1440p, the overall margin is reduced to just 2% in favour of the preview driver, and now we have just three examples where the performance was improved by double digits, and while the gains for those particular games are still mighty impressive, it doesn't do much to change the overall picture. And then at 4K, we again see an overall improvement of just 2%, but now not a single example of double digit gains, with just five examples where the performance uplift exceeded 5%. Now, previously I found the RTX 3070 to be 11% faster than the 6700 XT on average, and although we're calculating the margins in the reverse order here, we still see that overall the 6700 XT is now 7% slower. So a few percent change there, and based on the current pricing, that makes the Radeon GPU the obvious choice for this particular matchup. So impressive stuff there from AMD, and of course, it's always great to see some extra performance delivered at no additional cost. Unfortunately though, the DirectX 11 gains aren't seen across the board, and they were for the most part pretty soft. And then where the Radeon GPUs already really struggle compared to their GeForce competitors, the results there go pretty much unchanged. Think games such as PUBG and The Outer Worlds, for example. Overall, I'd say the preview driver is a great step for AMD, and it wasn't something I was expecting to see, so a great job there. That said, I think these results may disappoint quite a few of you, as the headlines I've been seeing over the last week do paint a more positive picture, with gamers expecting at least 4% across the board, with gains often much higher. Certainly, if you focus on games such as Watch Dogs Legion, Death Stranding, The Witcher, Apex Legends, Falls, or in Vanguard, for example, you're looking at a 10% improvement on average, which is obviously a very substantial uplift from a driver. But when it comes to our 50 game head-to-head -head battles, the reality is just a few percent. So even less than comparing SAM on versus off results. Of course, every little bit helps, and with the Radeon GPUs already much more affordable, boosting performance only tips the value equation further in AMD's favour. That said, I don't expect that this driver will change reviewers' GPU recommendations. As I said, overall they stack up very much the same, but I also don't want to water down the gains seen as some of them were truly impressive. 
So good stuff from AMD here. And of course it is great to see them dedicated to improving the gaming experience for their customers. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbor and Box community member, we have Float Plane and Patreon. So you can subscribe to either of one of those and you'll get access to exclusive Discord server for the all the Harbor and Box community chats there. Tim and I are active there. You can ask questions directly at any time of the day and we'll get back to you when we're awake, which is most hours. And we also do a monthly live stream. That's a lot of fun. Behind the scenes content, Q and A's. So cool stuff there to check out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.